Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, otherwise known as press, posterior P, reversible R, encephalopathy, the first letter E, syndrome, the first letter S. So P R E S, press, it is otherwise known as hyperperfusion disorders. So basically these disorders, these brain disorders are because of hyperperfusion, increased blood pressure, blood flow to the posterior regions of the brain, especially the occipital lobes. So these form a distinct entity known as press syndromes. The first letter of each word, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. So we take the first letter of each word, Posterior P reversible R encephalopathy E and syndrome S press P R E S. As the name suggests, as the name suggests, posterior it affects basically the posterior regions of the brain, the occipital lobe. Reversible usually they are reversible. Encephalopathy it causes a disorder of the brain function and put together it's a syndrome press. Right. So few things we have understood. One, it is because of increased blood flow. Second, it affects the posterior regions of the brain that is the occipital lobe and then it is reversible. Right. Now let's see what are the mechanisms for causing this press, posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. Basically, there are two important mechanisms to cause press posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. One, there is an increased blood flow hyperperfusion to the occipital lobes, the posterior regions of the brain. Why is there an increased perfusion or increased blood flow, the hyperperfusion to the posterior regions of the brain? It is because the cerebral autoregulatory threshold is exceeded. Because the cerebral autoregulatory auto threshold is exceeded, there is a hyperperfusion to the brain. What is autoregulation? When there is an increased blood pressure, brain try to decrease the pressure in the brain by causing vasoconstriction. On the other hand, when there is decreased blood pressure, Brain tries to compensate by dilating the vessel so that the blood flow is increased. This is autoregulation. But in this condition, press the autoregulatory threshold is exceeded so that when there is increased pressure, there is no vasoconstriction. So the pressure gets increases. This is the first mechanism: hyperperfusion due to the cerebral autoregulatory threshold being increased. The second mechanism is the blood brain barrier getting disrupted causing endothelial dysfunction and vasogenic edema. What is blood brain barrier? Blood brain barrier is the tight endothelial junctions of the vessels. Therefore, it does not allow the toxic substances present in the blood to enter into the brain. So it's a barrier between the brain on one side and the blood on the, un on the other side. The barrier is formed by the tight endothelial junctions. So when the tight endothelial junctions become dysfunctions and give away, the toxic substances present in the blood enters into the brain and water also along with it enters from the, from the blood into the brain causing vasogenic edema. So there are two mechanisms for the press. One there is hyperperfusion. Second there is an endothelial dysfunction causing impairment of the blood brain barrier. Right. Now another question comes. Why this encephalopathy has got a predilection for only the posterior regions? 
I have been insisting right from the beginning of the class posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, posterior, posterior occipit lobes are affected. Why only the posterior regions are affected? Why not the anterior regions? The explanation is that there is lower threshold for auto regulation breakthrough in the posterior circulation. There is a lower threshold for auto regulation breakthrough in the posterior circulation. So auto regulation threshold is perhaps more impact in the posterior regions as compared to the anterior regions. And second thing, there could be a vasculopathy that is more common in these vessels, that is the vessels of the posterior circulation because of the autoregulatory impairment and because there is a pathology selectively in these vessels, the press syndrome is seen more in the posterior regions as compared to the anterior regions. So what are the etiologies of press posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome? We said that the blood pressure and the blood flow is increased to the occipital regions of the brain. More important than the actual value of the pressure is the rapidity with which the blood pressure increases. The more rapid the blood pressure, the more rapid the blood flow into the brain, the more the development of the press rather than the actual value of the pressure. So we need to understand this before we go into the common etiologies of the press. So what are the etiologies of the press? There are two basic etiologies where the other disorders come under these two etiologic mechanisms, under the umbrella of these two etiologic mechanisms. One, there is an increased capillary pressure and second, there is an endothelial dysfunction. As I said in the beginning of, by, of the lecture, there is an increased perfusion, so there is an increased capillary pressure and second, there is an endothelial dysfunction of the blood-brain barrier. When there is an increased capillary pressure, the blood flow, the pressure increases. The classic examples are hypertensive encephalopathy and eclampsia. So hypertensive encephalopathy and eclampsia, there is an increase in the capillary pressure and therefore it results in press. The second mechanism is endothelial dysfunction. The tight endothelial cells of the vessel wall gets affected. It could be due to various mechanisms. One is the calcineurinin inhibitor toxicity like tacrolimus or cyclosporin. So the toxic immunomodulators like cyclosporin and tacrolimus can affect the tight endothelial cells and can cause endothelial dysfunction. Second is the help which we see in eclampsia patients. Help hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes and decreased platelet count. And the third is hemolytic uremic syndrome. In all these three, the common mechanism is endothelial dysfunction. So, the press can result because of two important etiologies. One, increased capillary pressure. The diseases could be hypertensive encephalopathy or eclampsia. Second, the endothelial dysfunction. It could be because of the toxins like cyclosporin or help or hemolytic uremic syndrome. Right. Now, what are all the clinical features of press posterior reversible encephalopathy? First, they'll have severe headache. They'll have severe headache. Second, because the brain gets affected, there's a hyperperfusion of the brain, vasogenic edema. It can irritate the brain and therefore patients may start having seizures. So they'll have a headache. Second, they'll have seizures. And third, as I said, the posterior regions are involved. The occipital lobes are involved. So they'll have visual disturbances. Visual, cortical visual disturbances. So they'll have cortical visual loss since the occipital lobe is involved. So the usual clinical features of press posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome are severe headache, seizures, occipital visual loss. So if any person comes with severe headache, seizures, occipital visual loss with increased blood pressure, we should always suspect posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. But how will we diagnose? How will we confirm press? We need to do MRI. MRI is better than CT scan. When we do MRI T2 imaging, there is high signal, high signal of edema 
in the posterior occipital lobes and they are not conformed to any single vastar territory. When we do MRI T2 imaging, there is high signal intensity in the posterior part occipital lobes and they are not confined or restricted to any particular vastar territory. It's a vasogenic edema. So when we get this kind of picture, it is diagnostic of press. How do we treat press? There are basically three mechanisms. One, lowering the blood pressure. Because there is an increased blood pressure, increased blood flow, we have to lower the blood pressure by giving IV levetalol or IV nifedipine. The second is the removal of the offending medications. As I said, the offending medications could be cyclosporin or tacrolimus. So we have to remove the offending medications, the medications which are toxic and are causing the press syndrome. And the third is the treatment of underlying medical conditions like eclampsia which gives rise to seizures and one of the effective antiepileptic medications for seizures in eclampsia is magnesium sulfate. So the treatment of press includes treatment of hypertension by giving IV labetalol or nicardipine or removal of the offending drug which causes press like tracrolimus or cyclosporin and third treating the underlying conditions like eclampsia which causes seizures and therefore we give anti-epileptic medications to control seizures that is magnesium sulfate. So very fascinating entity press posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome we take the first letter of each word and call it simply as press P R E S the hyperperfusion syndrome. It was a very good interesting lecture I've enjoyed giving it and I hope you have also enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinvas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Sinvas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.